As a service to the residents in neighborhoods at increased risk of flooding due to the recent Schultz fire, neighborhoods including Timberline and Wupaki Estates, Coconino County is making available waddles for installation on property to help mitigate the possible effects of flooding. Proper installation of the waddles is critical to maximize their effectiveness. Following are the steps involved in installing the waddles properly on your property. When assessing your property for installation of the waddle, you want to identify the high ground on your property and then use the waddles to create a diversionary device. Place the waddles about 15 to 30 feet from your structure in an arc pattern as you see here, such that water flowing downhill will be diverted away and to the side of your structure. And now we're going to go look at a demonstration of how to install the waddles on your property. The first step is really to, uh, to site your property and determine where the best placement for these waddles are going to be. Like I said, you want to create um, an arc that will help to uh, divert any water flowing from uphill away into the sides of your property. Um, once you've determined what that placement is for your purpose, uh, the, the steps in, for installing the waddles are first to dig a trench uh, about three inches deep and just about as wide as the waddle. Once you've got that trench dug for the length of your waddle installation, then all you do is roll the waddle into the trench like so and make sure that the ends butt up really nice and tight against the previous waddle. Just like so. And then you'll also be, uh, when you come to pick up your waddles, you'll also be given a set of stakes. Uh, there are a couple of different uh, installations for the waddle material that's available. These waddles are 10 feet in length, uh, and they require a minimum of three stakes per waddle. And what you'll want to do, you can see on these that are installed already over here, you want to install the first waddle within one foot of each end of each 10-foot section. So just like this, and you can observe that here. So one here, a second here, and then the third just in the middle. We don't want to have more than five feet in between any stake. Also available at the distribution center are waddles in 20 foot lengths. So you may be uh, given those when you come to pick up your materials. The 20 foot waddles require five stakes each in the same uh, distribution pattern. One on each end within one foot of the end of the waddle. And then for the 20 foot sections, three more stakes evenly spaced with no more than five feet in between. When you're pounding the waddles into the ground, you may experience some rocky soil conditions. We do live on a volcanic mountain, after all, right? Uh, you may have seen my crew and I drilling some pilot holes with some big stakes. We've also seen uh, folks use lengths of rebar to help kind of get a pilot hole going, and that seems to be fairly effective, but Perhaps all of you live in very nice sandy soil and you'll have no problems with that. <laughs> when you do install the, the stakes, you're going to want to pound them in so that no more than three inches of the stake is exposed above the top of the waddle. And that, what that's going to do is it's, these are 24 inch stakes, so it's going to give you nine inches of stake in the ground, which is a really nice solid uh, installation. And having a little bit of stake protruding from the top will mean that in the event of a water flow, the waddle will not be lifted up and off of the stake. So then, once you have completed the install with the, with the trench and the stakes, uh, you take the soil that you've excavated from digging your trench and you just um, kind of berm it up on the back side. I know you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'll demonstrate on the front. You'll want to do it on the downslope side of your installation but for purposes of a visual, I'll show you just now on the upslope side in this event. You just want to take the soil you've removed from your trench and just kind of berm it up on the downslope side of the waddle. 
like so. Doesn't have to be super compact, but just tamped down with a shovel or your foot. And the reason for that is that when the water does come from the upslope side, uh, it gives just an extra little bit of reinforcement for the wattle to stay secure and in that trench. Okay. Again, that soil on the downslope side. Uh, a couple of other points. Occasionally, wattles do require some maintenance. If uh, you do experience some flow on your property and there uh, is sediment or debris or other things that are coming down slope and uh, being uh, caught, diverted by the wattle, you may find on the upslope side that you're getting some sediment accumulation or, or some sort, something like this. Um, over time, it may accumulate to where uh, it's nearing the top of the wattle surface. And uh, what that would do is allow basically water to be able to flow up and over the wattle. Uh, so if you experience that or notice that, it's really easy just to take a shovel or a, a, a hoe. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, just clear that back out so that, um, so that the upslope side is free and clear uh, and able to uh, uh, continue its uh, purpose. As an alternative to using the wooden stakes for the wattle installation, two foot lengths of rebar are available for purchase at local hardware stores. Following are the steps for installing the wattle using the rebar stakes. First we'll want to pound the rebar directly through the wattle material, like so. Just like with, with the wooden stakes, we'll want to leave approximately three inches of the rebar sticking out of the top. Next, we'll need to secure the wattle to the rebar using wire, something similar to baling wire, also available at local hardware stores. We'll take a pre-cut length, approximately three feet long, and we need to wrap the entire wattle. So we'll lift the wattle up off the rebar just a little bit, feed the baling wire down under and all the way around the top of the wattle and then feed one of your wooden stakes provided through the baling wire as well and then using pliers or channel locks something similar to this can use to twist the wire to make a tight installation. In this way, the wire is holding the wattle to the rebar and using downward pressure on the stake to keep the wattle secure so that it does not lift over the top of the rebar. Using rebar in the wattle install creates a potential additional safety hazard. The sharp edges of the top of the rebar are exposed in such a way uh, can produce cuts or injuries. So the last step in the install process is to install one of these plastic safety caps, also available from local hardware stores. Simply place the cap over the top of the rebar, push down, and you've got a nice, safe, secure installation. So here you can see a demonstration of a complete and safe rebar installation. All three Stakes are applied, one at each end, one in the center, all tied down with rebar and the wooden stake. And you can see that at the ends we've left the wooden stake protruding from the end of the wattle. And this is so that when you're joining wattles together, you can use the same wooden stake to uh, anchor the, both the ends of abutting wattles uh, by anchoring this end of the stake to the rebar, securing the next wattle down the line. Coconino County is here to help. If after viewing this video you have questions or need assistance, please contact 1-877-679-8390 or send an email to schultzmitigation at coconino.az.gov.